finding critical numbers, making a first derivative number line, and or a second derivative number line are all great tools for helping us graph derivatives and antiderivatives. The graph of f prime is the slope at each x value of f. Remember, derivative means slope. The graph of f prime prime is the slope at each x value of f prime. Using the graph of f prime to create an f prime number line. So now if you're graphing the antiderivative, it's a little trickier. So take the function you're looking at and make an f prime number line in order to help you graph the f function or the antiderivative. Label the x values where f prime is equal to zero or undefined because those are critical numbers and also any domain restrictions. Positive y values represent a positive interval on the f prime number line, which will represent an increasing f function. And then negative y values represent a negative interval on the f prime number line, which means that f will be decreasing on those intervals. Use the x-intercepts of f prime to locate the relative extrema of f. So if the f prime number line changes sign at a critical number, then you'll know that critical number is a relative extrema. When the y values of f prime go from negative to positive, then f has a relative minimum. And when f prime goes from positive to negative, where f goes from increasing to decreasing, f will have a relative max. Using the graph of f prime to create an f prime prime number line, label the x values where the slopes of the f prime are zero or undefined and any domain restrictions on your number line. On the intervals where f prime is increasing, the f prime prime number line is positive. On the intervals where f prime is decreasing, the f prime prime number line is negative. That's a lot of information at the very beginning but I believe this will be very helpful when you are graphing the derivative and antiderivative. To graph the derivative of y equals x. So to graph the derivative, we're looking at the slopes at different points. So the slope at negative two is one. The slope at negative one the slope everywhere is one, right? This is a line. So no matter what the x value is, the slope is one. And remember, y prime, the derivative of x with respect to x is one. So yeah, our derivative is a constant, is a horizontal line at y equals one. To graph the derivative of x squared, the slope at negative one is approximately negative two. The slope at zero is zero. The slope at one, again, approximately two, but positive this time. And we know that y prime is equal to two x using the power rule, and that's our derivative. The slope at negative one is approximately positive three. The slope at zero is, of course, zero. And the slope at one is positive three. Using the power rule, y prime is equal to three x squared. And that's what we have here, a parabola with vertical stretch of three. Last one, the slope at negative one appears to be negative four. The slope at zero is zero, and the slope at one is positive four. Using the power rule, y prime is equal to four x cubed. So we know this will not be linear, it will be cubic. Use the graph of f shown to sketch the graph of f prime. To graph f prime, we're looking at the slopes of f. So first I'm going to determine are there any places on f where the slope is zero at negative two and two. So that is where f prime will have intercepts. At x equals zero, it looks to be negative one. So at zero, we'll plot a point at negative one. We also have a pretty steep slope at this end point that looks like it's slightly above one. So at negative three or at negative 3.5, our slope was a little bit more than positive one. At 3.5, at positive 3.5, our slope looks to be about more, a little more than one. 
in between negative 2 and negative 3, your slope is getting smaller. It's approaching 0. Here we're going down. At positive 1, we have a slope of negative 1 half, something like that. And there's a good sketch of our derivative. What graph that you've seen before looks like f? Yeah, f looks like a sine wave. And what about f prime? Looks like a cosine wave. And because cosine is the derivative of sine. Use the graph of f prime shown to sketch a graph of f with a starting point of 0, 1. Remember that vertical shift is not taken into account. Once you derive, vertical shift becomes zero. So they have to give us a starting point, or we have to choose a starting point. Here's the graph of f prime. So it's time to create an f prime number line, which means I'm looking at the signs of f prime to put onto the f prime number line. The graph goes from about negative 3.5 to 3.5. The derivative is defined at negative 3.5 and 3.5. It is 0. And when the derivative is 0 at certain x values, that makes those x values critical numbers. Are there any other critical numbers? Yes. 0. f prime is positive or above the x-axis from negative 3.5 to 0. f prime is negative or below the x-axis from 0 to 3.5. Now let's create the f prime prime number line. Creating an f prime prime number line from an f prime graph is just taking the slopes of the f prime graph and putting their signs on the f prime prime number line. Let's look for any place that the slope of f prime is 0 because that makes the second derivative equal to 0, and that could be a point of inflection. At negative 2, the slope of f prime, which is f prime prime, is 0. That is a possible point of inflection of f. At positive 2, the slope of f prime, which would be the second derivative, f prime prime, is 0. Another possible point of inflection. To determine the intervals, we look at when f prime is increasing versus decreasing, when the slopes of f prime are positive versus negative. This is an increasing function from negative 3.5 to negative 2. Then it's a decreasing function from negative 2 to positive 2. And then it goes back to be increasing. f prime is increasing, making f prime prime positive. f prime is positive to the left of 0 and negative to the right of 0. That means 0, which is our critical number, is a relative extrema. It is a relative max. Do we know the y value at x equals 0? Yes, because they gave it to me as my starting point. So our relative max is at 0, 1. To the left will be increasing, to the right will be decreasing. Between negative 3.5 and negative 2, f prime prime is positive, making f concave up for that interval. Also from 2 to 3.5, f is concave up. In between, we're concave down where the second derivative is negative. That means we have points of inflection at negative 2 and positive 2 because the concavity changes on either side of those x values. I need to choose an estimated y value for these points of inflection. I could choose 0 or negative 1. The graph doesn't really go further than that, so I'm going to choose uh, negative 1. 0 is also completely acceptable. To the left of 0, we're increasing, and to the left of negative 2, we're concave up. So increasing and concave up. Between negative 2 and 0, we're still increasing, but we're concave down. Between 0 and 2, we're decreasing and concave down. Between 2 and negative 3.5, we're still decreasing, but we're concave up. 
it starts at negative 3.5 and ends around 3.5 so this is a good sketch of what the antiderivative looks like given this derivative graph use the graph of f prime shown to sketch a graph of f prime prime and a possible graph of f first i'm going to create the f prime number line given the f prime graph so let's identify any critical numbers critical numbers are where f prime is undefined or is equal to zero it looks like we only have one critical number and negative two now to the left of negative two f prime is negative it is below the x-axis and from negative two onward it is positive f prime is above the x-axis which means f will be increasing on this interval and decreasing on this interval let's make a possible graph for f prime prime and do the f prime prime number line at the same time are there any places on the f prime graph where the slope is equal to zero or the slope is undefined here our slope of f prime is undefined because there's a sharp turn so f prime is not differentiable meaning f prime prime is undefined at this point x equals zero this could be a possible point of inflection now for f prime prime we're looking at the slopes of f prime the slopes are positive 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 the graph of f prime is increasing entirely from negative infinity to infinity so f prime prime is positive from negative infinity to infinity so let's sketch the graph of f prime prime to the left of zero the slopes are all positive one f prime prime is positive one x equals zero is a value of non-differentiability the slope of f prime at zero is undefined everything to the left of it was one though and then the slope at point one is probably zero right and this looks like the bottom of a parabola so really close to zero would be a slope of zero but again not defined at zero so i will put a hole at zero and then at one we have a slope of around two at one we have a slope of two so at x equals one i'll graph two for the f prime prime graph and we know since this is part parabola that this will be a line and because this was a line this will be a constant or a horizontal line do we have any relative extrema or points of inflection yes we do have a relative min at x equals negative two we do not have a y value for it for that they did not give us a starting point so we're going to choose the value but it needs to be the minimum of f so i'll choose the y value of negative two we'll see we can shift or adjust if we need to from there to the left of negative two the graph of f is decreasing and concave up to the right of negative two the graph of f is increasing and also concave up I can check because I know the antiderivative of a line is a parabola and this line had the slope of one so this parabola will be vertically shrunk but I know that to the right of zero the antiderivative of a parabola is a cubic function but where the parabola meets the cubic function must still be differentiable because f prime is defined from negative infinity to infinity so you may not have gotten the perfect stretch but as long as the left side represents a parabola and the right side represents a cubic function and where they meet is smooth and differentiable then you have a good sketch for the graph of f